Hey guys, Jamie at the Summer Rain Channel. Welcome back. So today we're going to make a do-it-yourself whip soap base. The cool thing about a whip soap base is you can turn it into so many different things. So if you take this whip soap base and you add some butters and oils, you can really make this a skin-loving soap. And then if you want to go ahead and change it into an exfoliating soap, just add a bit of sugar to it. There are so many things you can do once you have your whip soap base made. Now you can buy this, but I really enjoy the process of like taking something and making it from start to finish. I just... I don't know, I'm weird like that and I really like to make my own stuff and I like to customize it to suit my needs. Now I did put the full recipe for this down in the description box below, so you'll find that down here. I also put a link to my blog where you can get a printable recipe. I also go a little bit more in depth about the ingredients, why we use them, everything like that. So if you wanna learn a little bit more, just hop over to my blog. And this is gonna be a thicker soap base than what your final product would be. So when you make it, you might be like, whoa, this is kind of thick and that's intentional. So this is a soap base, meaning that you're gonna add other things to it later. So if we were to have this thinner now, when we add some oils, some butters, some fragrance oil, whatever it is we need to add to this to customize it to make what we're making, it's gonna wind up being too thin and really not holding its shape. So I make the base a little bit thicker than what I would want my finished product to be, knowing that I'm going to add more things into this later when I actually customize it. Because on its own, I mean, it'd be fine, but it's not very luxurious to use. There's no smell, there's no color, there's no wow to the soap base. It is just the base. So knowing that we're going to customize this later, we make this a little bit thicker now. As you can see, it really holds its shape and it is pretty difficult to pipe. However, when you add the other ingredients in for your final product, you are gonna see why we make it this way. Without further ado, let's dive in and make our whip soap base. I have a crock pot for this recipe. Um, you can certainly use it on a double boiler as well. I just thought the crock pot would allow you kind of to see what I'm doing because it's difficult for me to record on my stove. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this up to a high setting. We're gonna go ahead and add our distilled water. And it's very important that you use distilled water. So all water is not created equal. Some water is hard water, some water has different minerals. Just using distilled water is typically a best practice. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out my vegetable glycerin. So vegetable glycerin is a humectant, which means that it draws moisture to your skin. This is gonna make this a very nice whipped soap base. It also helps to keep this like a light and fluffy consistency. As you can see here, we do use quite a bit of vegetable glycerin, but that's fine because it is relatively inexpensive. And we're gonna go ahead, get all of that into our crock pot. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add our caprocaproglucoside. This is a liquid non-ionic surfactant. It is very bubbly and it is good solubilizer. What that means is it's gonna go ahead and solubilize ingredients into this. So later, you might wanna add some butters and some oils and some things to make this more luxurious. And this is gonna help with getting those to mix in. And the same thing, we'll go ahead and pop this into our crock pot. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out my sodium cocoa sulfate. Now, this is not SCI, this is SCS. This is a solid anionic surfactant. It makes for a really dense and creamy foam. It's actually derived from coconut oil and it's easily absorbed into water. So this is gonna go ahead and it's gonna absorb easily into water. Now this is gonna to be too much for my measuring container, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump that out. And then we'll go ahead and dump the rest in there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and measure out our stearic acid. So stearic acid leaves a very velvety feeling to a whipped soap. It's used to help stiffen the soap up because we need this to be more in a solid form than what you're gonna get with these other surfactants. Go ahead and pop that into our crock pot. And I'm just gonna move this right into the center here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna kind of mix everything in here just a little bit before I put the lid on. And then we'll just go ahead and pop the lid on and we will allow our surfactants to melt. I've had my whipped soap base in here for about a half an hour and I'm just going to go ahead and come in. I'm going to give it a really good mix. As you can see, it's starting 
to melt a little bit more on the sides. That's why you wanna make sure that you come in and give this a really good mix. And this is just gonna to need to keep heating for a little bit longer. We really wanna go until all of the surfactant noodles, I don't know how well you can see that, are melted in here. Um, I'm terrible because I typically come in and I will stir this maybe more often than I need to. I'm just one of those people that like to really keep an eye on stuff. It might go a little bit quicker if you're not opening the lid all the time like me. Um, also, if you wanted to make it faster, you could certainly make it on a double boiler. I just didn't do that um, because it's hard for me to record over my stove. So I thought this would be a way just to kind of show you the process of doing it. Plus, I'm not really in a rush today. It's a lazy Saturday, so I have nothing but time to make this. It's been about 10 more minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to a low heat. It's starting to melt really well, but I still have some little chunks of surfactant in here. If you can see that, we want to make sure that those are all the way melted into our whipped soap base. So we'll just let this go for a little bit longer. Same thing, I let this sit maybe for another 15 minutes and as you can see, all of the bits of surfactant have melted. So now what we're just left with is this heated up pool of surfactant mixture. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into a different container that's gonna be a little bit easier to work with. Also, I don't wanna keep heating the surfactants. I need them to cool down so we can add our preservative. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pull this out of this container. Now this is not cooled all the way yet, it's still awfully warm, but as you can see it's starting to thicken up into a whipped soap base. So what we're going to do is we are just going to allow this to cool a little bit more before we can add our preservative to it. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to mix this up really well so I can check the temperature of it. We need to make sure that we're below 122 degrees for my preservative before we add it in. And I'm at 119. Now your preservative might have a different temperature if you're not using the same one as I am. I'm using liquid Germol Plus. If you're using something else, be sure that you check the temperature on that. And so I'll go ahead, add the preservative in. Now I'm gonna mix this in by hand a little bit and then I'm gonna hop in here with the hand mixer and really make sure that I get that all mixed in. Okay, now that we have the preservative in, this whip soap is finished as you can see it is a light and fluffy very pliable consistency so it's going to harden up a little bit more when it cools down to room temperature so what i'm going to do i'm just going to let this sit until we get to room temperature and then i'll come back and i'll show you what the final consistency is and how you work with this soap base i really wanted to let this cool all the way so then this way you can kind of see what the consistency is and then i can whip it and go ahead and pipe it so I've let this sit for a while. I went out, I ran some errands, I washed my car, I cooked dinner, I let this really sit. And as you can see, it's a very thick whipped soap consistency. Now this is how it would be if you were to buy the whipped soap, it'd come in a consistency like this. Now to get this to be light and fluffy again, you just hop in with a hand mixer. And you can already see the consistency changing a little bit. I'm gonna keep mixing this up. And now this is easier to mix when you're actually making something with it because typically you're gonna add some oils or some butters, a little bit of fragrance oil, some things that'll lighten it up just a little bit more. But this is the final consistency of your whipped soap. Now in a previous whip soap base video that I made, I was asked to show the piped consistency of this, so I'll go ahead and do that now for you.
and there is your whipped soap base so as you can see it's going to hold any shape that you pipe it into and it's going to like have a peak so however you pipe it that's how it's going to end up and I'm really trying to cover all the bases in this video to make sure that I don't forget anything or I don't have any questions um, that are left unanswered. I piped this yesterday and I left this to sit out and I just want to show you kind of what the finished consistency is. So as you can see, if I touch it, like I'm pressing on it here, it's not pushing it down at all. But if I smush it down, as you can see, it is moldable. So this is gonna harden up. You'll be able to package it and things like that and still hold, as you can see, it's still holding a bit of the piping design in there, but it is a whip soap base, so it's never gonna get into completely solid form. So I have a little bit of the soap base and I have wet hands. I just wanted to show you how it works. As you can see, a little bit is going to give you a lot of bubbles. And they're very like big and fluffy bubbles um, due to the surfactant blend that we used in this whip soap base. Those are some nice bubbles.